Okay, so here's the thing. So um, we've already discussed, or maybe uh, um, your instructors, uh, uh, this is part of the video lecture session. So uh, your instructors may have um, introduced to you the policies and the guidelines. Now the question is, why do we need to study this course at the, at the end of the day? But ba yung ba kailangan ng Physics 71? Bakit sa program na in apply ko, uh, assuming I'm a shifty, or bakit sa course na meron ako, or na, that I'm pursuing, Physics 71 is there, bakit di na lang, but, but, but di na lang GE na lang ibigay dyan, bakit kailangan pa ng Physics 71? So, uh, I'll answer to you in a bit. Bakit, bakit nyo kailangan? So, um, but before that, let's go to the so-called core physics courses. So, so essentially, um, especially for physics majors, hindi naman kayo majors, alam ko. Uh, but uh, in order for you to master physics, uh, in, in, uh, you need to at least master this core, which is part of that is classical mechanics, electromagnetism, quantum mechanics, and thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. Some of you, or most of you, do not have Physics 73 anymore. Therefore, ang mapapractice nyo na lang ay ito, which is part of Physics 71. Tapos ito, which is part, <laughs> di kita kasi red din pala to, which is part of Physics 72. So these two here are subparts of Physics 73. In dati, especially in engineering programs, required pang Physics 73. Ngayon, um, only, I think, triple E and uh, GE na lang ata ang nagre-require ng Physics 73. I don't know why. <laughs> nag 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 nagbawas talaga ng subjects yung mga, mga, um, mga departments because of the K-12 curriculum. Ngayon, ito lang nga. So, what's really the point of classical mechanics? So, uh, Physics 71 is again the mechanics of particles, rigid bodies, and fluids. And we will be dealing especially with classical mechanics. But what do we mean by classical mechanics? When we say classical mechanics, so we are focusing on one of the parts, which is classical mechanics. When we say classical mechanics, it looks like this. So um, we can analyze the motion of bodies. So, as, and as I said, mechanics is the study of motion. And therefore, uh, if we want to go into the classical regime, the classical regime means that the size of the particle is not too small and the speed of the particle is not too large. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Um, uh, yung speed, merong, merong malinaw na limit yan. If the speed uh, V is less than, I'm uh, sorry, if, if V is proportional to the speed of light, hindi na classical mechanics yan. Oh, in, in a different context, classical pa rin siya, pero relativistic na siya. Special relativity. So, if the speed of a particle is approximately the speed uh, of flight or um, comparable to the speed of flight, we are na, beyond the scope na siya ng, ng classical mechanics. Okay? Further, kung ang objects mo naman ay ordinary objects, nasa rim pa, pa rin ng classical mechanics. But if you're talking of the motion of particles like atoms and um, molecules, yung mga yan, yung mga maliliit na subatomic particles, hindi na rin yan pasok sa classical mechanics. That's now part of quantum mechanics. Which is, iba, medyo nag-iiba na yung formalism na ginagawa. Of course, they're still related kasi nga may connection, may connection pa niyang dalawang yan. But these two are different. Iba na yung rules na, sin, na nag-guide sa um, subatomic regime or subatomic realm. Okay? Now, if it's also small like particles and it's also fast, these particles are comparable to the speed of light, dun papasok yung high energy physics which is the fun stuff or the exciting stuff. Okay? Sabi nila, ang classical mechanics daw boring. Well, I, I, that, that might be true na boring siya. But you need them in order for you to appreciate all this fancy stuff here. Because ang ginagawa ng mga fancy stuff na to, binabakli niya yung mga assumptions ng classical mechanics. Naintindihan. Yun yung ginagawa niya. Okay, some parts of this classical mechanics is not true. Some parts is not true. Some parts is not true. Parang ganon. And therefore, they have another regime. Okay, and also, bakit importante siya? Kasi, because of the limitations of the size and the speed, we are only talking of ordinary objects here. Classical mechanics describe the motion of ordinary objects, like your usual ball, your usual seesaw, your usual um, ferris wheel, your usual um, roller coaster, your, your usual car, yung mga yan. You can always describe it in the realm of classical mechanics. Malinaw? Malinaw ba to? Is this, is this paradigm clear? Malinaw. So the point here is especially on you guys na uh, part ng allied disciplines on on na ally sa na ally talaga yun. No? Uh, allied with physics, um there are um some of these topics will be important in analyzing the motion of the objects you're considering. 
And since this is also a science, uh, um, it's also important for you to understand what's going on in the different sciences. Kami, required kami ng Bio 11 or, or Chem 16. Kasi we need at least a basic understanding of, uh, of these disciplines. Kayo rin. You need a basic understanding of the motion of objects. Kaya may classical mechanics plus kayo. Naintindihan. Malinaw to. Malinaw. <laughs> I hope this is clear. <laughs> okay. Now, let's go to um, let's go to the next slide. So, the main questions in mechanics is the following. Again, mechanics is the study of motion. Uh, if you want to know more on this, please watch the lecture um, lecture video 3 part 1 kasi in-explain ko yung uh, mas malalim na insight dito. But the point here is there are two main questions in classical mechanics, which is how do objects move and why do objects move? Dalawa lang yan. Um, your physics 71 can be summarized into two, the two questions. How and why do objects move? The question of how concerns with the question of um, mathematical description of motion. It's the mathematical description of motion. Ano ibig sabihin yan? When you say it's mathematical description, meaning uh, it looks like translating a language. It seems like you are translating a language. Like for example, pag nakita ka ng kotse, anong sasabihin mo kung ordinaryong tao ka? Ah, mabilis yung kotse. Diba? Sasabihin mo. Of course, yung driver ka, sasabihin, ah, mga nasa 50 yan or 40 yung, yung bilis yan. Where 50 and 40 means 40 kph or 40 kilometers per hour or 50 kilometers per hour. However, Medyo incomplete yun kasi what do you mean by the word fast? Medyo vague yung meaning ng word fast. Um, yung bullet train ba fast in the context of the motion of, for example, the earth? Hindi siya fast in, the, in that context. So fast means different things into in different perspectives and different ideas. Now, the point is, paano ka magagawa ng, paano ka makakapredict ng motion ng other quantities if you don't know uh, that, so if you don't know the, the, the a more mathematical way. So ang nangyayari, tinatranslate mo ngayon, Yung, um, yung language na medyo vague, which is your usual language, into a more mathematical and more accurate language. Okay? That's why the first question in mechanics is how do you describe the motion of objects mathematically? May, malinaw, how do you describe the motion of objects mathematically para, mer, para ma-predict mo yung motion nila? Kasi kaya mong i-predict yung motion nila if you know this motion, uh, the, the uh, if you can describe their motions mathematically. Okay? Malinaw ba yun? Clear ba? I hope this is clear. This part is clear. Okay? And then, the second now question is, why do objects move? Bakit gumagalaw ang mga bagay-bagay? Kasi uh, may cause, may dahilan bakit gumagalaw. For example, a ball that starts moving, pwede mong interpret into different ways yan. Like for example, First, you can interpret it as the, the gravitational force acts on that object. Therefore, that's the reason bakit gumalaw yung object. Another interpretation is that pwedeng yung energy niya nag-transform from potential energy to kinetic energy. That's another interpretation of um, the reason why this object moved. Diba? So there are the, the point here is uh, we will study in this course the hows and the whys of motion of objects. Okay? Yun basically ang point ng course na to. Malinaw? Is this clear? Is this clear? I hope this is clear. Okay. And then, now, as I said, we have our course description again. The mechanics of particles, rigid bodies, and fluids. So, may tatlong objects dyan. You have particles, rigid bodies, and fluids. But what is a particle? What is a rigid body? Diba? So the first exam coverage of Physics 71 is on the mechanics of particles. But what do you mean when you say it's a particle? A particle is represented by a dot. Diba? Dot yan, ibig sabihin, you ignore, ignore the size and the shape of the object. Wala kang pakialam kung yung bola ay bilog. Wala kang pakialam kung yung box ay, 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 um, ay cube. Dot lang siya. Therefore, kung dot lang yan, ini-ignore mo yung pagka-shape ng object. At ini-ignore mo yung dimensions ng object. That's why, for it to be a particle, lahat ng forces dyan na nag act external in nature. Wala, wala tayong konsepto ng internal forces dyan. Ano yung implication nun? Remember your Newton's second law? Summation of forces is mass times acceleration. The F here means net external forces. So, 
di ba? Net external forces. Therefore, sinasatisfy ng particle yung condition na yan for, um, for any particle, F equals MA is true. Tama? So we will be considering first the, um, the kinematics and the dynamics of particles in the first exam co coverage. And in the second exam coverage, we now go to extended bodies or rigid bodies and then fluids. A rigid body is rigid, meaning hindi nagbabago yung shape niya through time. Ibig sabihin yung distance between two particles inside that rigid body shouldn't change through time. Yun yung ibig sabihin. Yun yung more formal way para, para masabi na rigid body ang isang rigid body. Hindi siya nai-stretch, hindi siya nai-swift, hindi siya natitear, hindi siya napupunit. Yun ang ibig sabihin for rigid bodies. And therefore, dito, kinoconsider mo na yung shape ng object. So, kasi, halimbawa, um, bola. Ang bola, kapag pag gumulong, mukha lang, ay hindi, di magandang example yung bola eh. Ferris wheel na lang. <laughs> Or, yeah, Ferris wheel. Ang Ferris wheel, umiikot. Di ba? Umiikot ang Ferris wheel. Pero, hindi siya nagtatranslate. Meaning, hindi gumagalaw, o hindi, hindi gumagalaw, umiikot lang siya. Medyo weird yung, hindi siya nagtatranslate, pero nagro-rotate siya. And, kung titignan mo lang siya on a particle perspective, hindi yan gumagalaw. Kasi titignan mo siya as a dot. Di ba? Pero, umiikot siya eh. So, kulang yung formalism ng particle na particle lang. There are some forces or energies that are lost when you only consider the particle um, motion of uh, the motion in terms of particles. So, hence, kailangan mo dyan ng rigid body formulation. For simple translation of objects, particle formalism is okay. For, uh, if you consider rotations, kailangan mo na i-extend yan to extended bodies or uh, as an example, rigid bodies. So, yun yung ibig sabihin na to. Malinaw? Malinaw ba to? Malinaw ba to? Yung Ferris wheel, umiikot siya, pero hindi gumagalaw. Matakot pa pag gumulong yan, di ba? So yun. Yun yung basically yung ibig sabihin ng course description na to. And then finally, um, balik tayo kay course goal. Kay course goal, ang sinasabi niya, you want to solve problems on mechanics and fluids and wave motion using Newton's laws and conservation principles. So, so ang tanong, ano yung mga gusto natin isolve na problems? So, we want to solve problems in this Uh, in the motion of bodies, in fluid mechanics, and in the motion of waves. So, the question is, paano natin isosolve yun? Isosolve natin yun using two con concepts, so, two main concepts. Newton's laws, conservation principles. So, ang tanong, eh bakit Newton's laws? Eh marami namang ways na para mag-solve ng problem sa mechanics. In fact, there are different formalisms of mechanics. Only one of them is Newtonian. Okay. Doon sa mga mahilig mag-search, may, may makakakita kayo ng term na Lagrangian dyan, makakakita kayo ng Hamiltonian dyan. These are other formalisms of mechanics known as analytical mechanics. Um, Hamilton-Jacobi, yung mga ganyan. But we will focus on Newtonian. Bakit? Kasi, since hindi naman kayo majors, um, and also, uh, Newtonian mechanics is something that you can, um, you are more... Um, Uh, kasi di ba, nung high school kayo, Newtonian naman talaga yung ginagamit. You start with the basic. And you start with something that you're familiar with. And doon naman sa pag nag-a-analyze naman kayo ng systems, especially sa engineers, di ba, um, you're more interested in the more physical uh, ideas like Newtonian forces. So, kaya, ang gagamitin natin for now, Newtonian formalism. Okay? Oh, sorry, question. Bakit may mga other approaches? Kasi it turns out that some problems can be, can be solved much easier using other approaches. So, But for now, let's focus on the more fundamental, more classical Newtonian mechanics. Malinaw? Malinaw? Malinaw to. I hope this is clear. And then finally, we have our conservation principles. What do we mean when something is conserved? Hal halimbawa, may kakausap pang environmentalist. Paano masasabi na conserved ang isang quantity? O kung sasabi niya, let's conserve forests, for example. Diba, ang ayaw nila, maubos yung forest or maubos yung trees. Ay, um, at some point, baka magka-problem din pag sobra-sobrang daming trees. Ang gusto nila, ma-preserve yung number ng trees sa isang lugar. Therefore, ayaw mong magbago yung number ng trees through time. Hence, ganun din yung konteksto ng conservation. Pag we say something is conserved, the time derivative of that quantity vanishes. Therefore, that quantity is conserved through time. At may tatlong physical quantities tayo na pag-uusapan sa kursong to. Energy, linear momentum, and angular momentum. In certain conditions, these three quantities are conserved in time, i.e. the time derivative of these quantities vanish. Malinaw? Malinaw? Is this clear? 
So when we say it's conserved, it is constant in time. Therefore, when we look at the video lectures and I've derived quantities there, tas bigang may lumbas na DDT something equal zero, automatic conserved quantity yan. Conserved quantity, yung, yung quantity na yun. <laughs> okay? Questions? Questions? May tanong? Wala? So here is the course coverage of Physics 71. The LE1 coverage focuses on the kinematics and dynamics of particles. Particles meaning uh, um, the dimensions and the shape of the object is first ignored. And then after that, so you have units, physical quantities, and vectors, the most basic parts, motion in 1D, motion in 2D and 3D, Newton's law, so we go to dynamics. So we first describe the motion of that object in one dimension, two dimensions, and maybe three dimensions. And then after that, we discuss some basic um, consequences, like for example, free fall motion, projectile motion. So these are all descriptions of motion. And then after that, we discuss Newton's laws, which what causes the motion of objects, which is a force. And what causes translation of objects, which is force. And then after that, we apply them to different cases. My favorite chapter, chapter five. Uh, and then after that, we go to work and energy of particles and we transition to rigid bodies. We transition to systems of particles because energies can only be defined in terms of systems of particles. I'll discuss more on that. Uh, or please check one of the lecture videos in that. They discuss good extensively. So, and then after that, we have Momentum, so na yung mga conservation principles, energy conservation, and momentum conservation at chapter 6 and 7. And then we go now to the rigid body formalism, rigid bodies na tayo, dynamics and statics of rotational motion, including angular momentum conservation, fluid motion, and gravitation, and finally, periodic motion or oscillating, quant oscillating objects. So that is the coverage of our Physics 71. Are there any questions for this topic? May tanong ba? May mga tanong ba? Wala? Okay, so um, so are you ready? I hope you're ready. Next week we'll start, but on Friday we'll have a, uh, we'll have a diagnostic um, quiz on one of on mathematics. Sige, so okay, so um, wait, uh, home. So again, um, those who are watching the orientation part of this um, video lecture series on YouTube, thank you very much for um, for watching it, and I see you all next time.